Well, status checker is a bit more involved than our partition method on channel. This is because there's a bit of uh, core logic somewhere uh, in the middle of this mess. And then everything, everything else, if you, if you look closely, everything else only has to do with the fact that we are running the same function in parallel or, or if you wish, concurrently on different fibers. So when you look at the run on the at the at the run uh, function that we call on status checker, what you will recognize is that eighty percent of the code you see is actually infrastructure code that has to do with the way we spin off different fibers to run uh, the job of checking statuses much more quicker. And then there's a tiny tiny bit, like three lines of code, that are actually our business logic, our core logic. Now. Testing something like this, this beast that is um, status checker right now, is a bit complicated for two reasons. Because we have, well, mainly because we have this um, interleaving of uh, concurrency, uh, concurrency logic and business logic uh, mixed together. So what we're gonna do, and this is the refactoring bit of things, is we're gonna refactor this uh, module in a way that allows us to extract the concurrency related part from it and only focus on the um, on the functional part of it on the business logic right and if you think about it what we're doing here is we're running an operation concurrently and this is not something that really has anything to do with uh, with a status checker it's just something ni nice to have uh, when we operate on channels so what I'll do is I'm gonna take a snapshot of this uh, a copy of this uh, method almost end to end let's do it end to end and I'm gonna port it to the concurrency util module and what I'll do is I'll define a new function a new utility function on uh, on the abstract class um, channel t and this method is gonna be called map because really if you think about it what we're doing is we are mapping the values uh, coming in uh, from a particular channel into a set of new channels, uh, depending on the number of workers we're operating on. What I'll do to make our life even simpler is I'm gonna define workers uh, default to be one, so that whenever we want to just transform values coming from one channel into another, it's just a matter of calling map on the channel, and then we can do the transformation in a block. And what we get out of that is a new channel. And whenever we want to actually make that a bit more sophisticated, we can just set the number of workers to two or three or four or whatever. And that's going to automatically give us a number of workers operating concurrently on uh, off of the same uh, off, off of the same channel, which is the one we are invoking the map method on. Uh, most of these methods should stay more or less the same. So we are still defining a countdown, countdown, which is a channel that we use to count the workers that have uh, completed uh, their work. And then rather than having a, a um, channel of success and failure, we're going to have to define map in a way that so that it is generic. So it will return a channel K for all K. So this is going to be uh, generic in the, in the type parameter K. And that's going to be the type of the channel at the, the channel that we're the type of the channel that we're going to return. So it's going to be channel K new tap URL status stream doesn't make any sense in this context. So we're just going to be calling it um, uh, output stream, which is a name we're given we've given in other areas of our in other parts of our code as well. And so what we do is uh, we still call supervisor the uh, the fiber that operates at the high level and just coordinates the workers uh, waiting for completion uh, what this supervisor does is it just waits for the countdown to go down to zero and once it goes to zero it closes the downstream channel which is as we say owned by uh, the fiber uh, that we define in this in this block looking at the workers we are still happy to define the workers with a an identifier worker wi that's fine uh, this part of code though doesn't make much sense in the sense that what we're doing is yes we are receiving on a particular stream but that stream is going to be self and rather than putting the value into a variable what we're doing is we're calling block dot call self dot receive so we're calling a method 
sorry, we're calling a block on the uh, on the value received uh, from the channel. So let's remember to also define the pass the block, uh, define the block as a parameter of this function. It's going to be block of type t that goes into type k. As easy as this, and types make all the sense they can make. We're still logging, why not? Logger is now defined at the level of, uh, let me double check. I don't know if we ever defined a logger inside channel, so I'm just gonna, for the time being, suppress this, this line, but we're gonna import the logger in a second. And ensure still makes sense. We're counting down dot, we're counting down by one every time a, a channel is every time a fiber a worker fiber has been closed i think parentheses just work fine i think let's try and see i'm gonna be saving this uh, and see how things break uh, and as you can see we've e extracted all the that is uh, specific to the concurrency aspect of of our problem into a function into, into a method on, on channel and now we can go back to status checker and redefine it in uh, as a function of that uh, of that of that um, new method we define so in in this case and you're gonna see how this we're gonna refactor a bit more in a second what we're doing is we're calling map with a number of workers uh, which is workers and then passing in a block that takes a value which is what it's a URL and then what we do is we actually run our logic here the first line is not needed anymore because we're getting past the URL already so what we do is we run result equals get status URL and then URL status stream send result and actually we don't even do that right because we don't need to uh, we don't need to send the value downstream. Whatever we return is going to be sent into the value for us. So we don't need to do URL status stream send result. Whatever is returned by the block is going to be sent down to the downstream channel. So really, with all of this, we have abstracted away a lot of concurrency specific details. And all that is left is these three lines of code. So I can get rid of everything else, um, which is whenever we run our uh, status checker what we're really doing is we're doing URL stream map passing the number of workers and then we just get status and push into the downstream channel that's it I'm gonna save now and also uh, other than looking at the test I'm gonna be uh, trying and running I'm gonna be trying and running the uh, the application from scratch so I'm closing this let's see how this goes Um, ideally, we would just see the application working as it used to. There might be some compilation error. We're going to fix them along the way. And to recap while we wait, if we go back to concurrency util, we extracted what used to be a bunch of logic uh, related to concurrency that used to live inside the status checker uh, task into a separate fiber a, into a separate function utility function in the concurrency util um, module looks like something has broken which is fine uh, we're not printing anything anymore which makes me think that we are not actually uh, passing values down the stream which is a, a possibility so if we go back to concurrency util it's very likely that we forgot to actually send the value so we do block call self receive this is going to evaluate the function on um, evaluate the block on the receive value but then we also need to send the value downstream right and so we're going to do out put stream dot send block call if I run this again we should be good now <laughs> 